Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and today's video is going to be different because today I'm going to be talking about a good friend of mine, uh, Marshall Allen, who has recently uh, passed away from a heart attack at the young age of 52, uh, just on May 19th of 2024. And Marshall um, was incredibly important to healthcare in America because he was probably one of the foremost investigative journalists uh, in America for healthcare. Now, uh, Marshall um, grew up in uh, Colorado and actually started out in the ministry. And he actually, uh, he and his wife uh, worked as missionaries um, in their, in their younger years in Kenya for three years. And he got a master's in theology. Um, so Marshall was a Christian who really saw his investigative journalism as an extension of his, uh, of his service to God. And you know, it's kind of like, you know, Mr. Rogers was a Presbyterian minister and kind of his kid's show was his ministry. Well, Marshall's ministry was his journalism in healthcare. And he won multiple prestigious journalism awards. His, um, his reporting, frankly, was instrumental in the passage of federal legislation called the, the CAA, which um, further uh, regulated um, the health insurance industry. And he... His, his reporting was so impactful. I mean, it was like, it wasn't about like, oh, well, that's just so horrible to read about. No, it actually changed things. There was a woman who gave birth to a premature child and her insurance company would not pay the like $830,000 hospital bill for that baby. And this poor woman was trying to get the insurance company to pay for this baby's care for a year, and they wouldn't do it. And it wasn't until Marshall wrote an article about it that finally they agreed to cover the charges. I mean, if Marshall had not done that reporting, who knows what would have happened to that woman and that child, okay? Marshall... Um, loved God, and Marshall loved Jesus, and Marshall loved God's children. And he and I, as friends, um, now he contacted me because he saw the videos that I made, and he saw that we were both uh, passionate about improving health care for uh, everyday Americans. And so we struck up a friendship when he was still living in uh, New Jersey and working in New York City. And then just, and I live in Dallas, and coincidentally, he ended up getting a job down here in the Dallas area. And so we've been able to like have lunch together and be able to, and you know, I live on a small farm and just literally a few weeks ago before his passing, he and his wife and another friend of ours and our friend's wife, they came over to my farm and I'm going to show you some pictures uh, of that. So literally, I just I like just saw him, and I was so fortunate that we we started our friendship sort of long distance through our mutual um, passion for improving healthcare. And I was so lucky that he was able to move so close. And we love talking about the Bible, and um, and and Marshall, um, like he wasn't he was not like self-righteous or high and mighty at all about, you know, righting the wrongs of healthcare. He was just trying to help God's children. That's all he was trying to do. And, um, and, and he wrote an article in ProPublica that was co-published by the New York Times that was about how his Christian faith was actually instrumental in his success as a healthcare investigative journalist. And uh, one of the things that he said, he had all these Bible verses that he said in this article. Um, and one of the one of the Bible verses that he talked about was how was this one from Genesis, where um 
in the very beginning of the Bible, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. He knew that you and me and him and everybody else on this planet was made in God's image. And so to the extent that people were being taken advantage of, whether it was by an insurance company or a doctor or a hospital or a government agency related to health care, then that was essentially taking advantage of a, a literally a child of God, somebody, a being that was created in the image of likeness of God. And he saw that almost as like an affront to God, not, and again, not in a self-righteous way, but as a way of like, you know, another Bible verse that we would talk about a lot uh, was from the book of Proverbs. And I'm just going to paraphrase it here where it says, you know, rescue those who are staggering towards slaughter if it is within your ability to help. And so we were just like, look, we we're kind of in the ability to help. Marshall was in the ability to help. And so that's exactly what he did. Um, specifically, in this article that he wrote for ProPublica in the New York Times, he called out how the Bible does not like um, nefarious business activities. The Bible does not like deception. The Bible does not like duplicity in our interactions with each other, in our um, in our commerce with each other, in our transactions with each other, in our care for each other. So, so here's a, another uh, verse from the book of Proverbs that, um, that Marshall talked about in that New York Times ProPublica article. He said, the Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. And so he knew, he, he was talking with a young journalist one time, and he and this young journalist was getting all exasperated with the state of the world. And Marshall was like, well, you realize we live in a, a fallen world, right? I mean, like, like that's that's the way it is. That's like ever since the Garden of Eden, like that's that's how it works. And he's like, Do you understand the implications of that? Like the world is filled with duplicity. And it's filled with these things, not to like shake our head and say, oh, well, this is just, you know, too bad, but to say, well, what can we do in our own small ways to help our fellow man? And that's all he was trying to do. Um, and then he not only was doing that himself, he was teaching other people how to do that, too. And that brings me to this, this uh, verse, another verse from the book of Proverbs. Train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So one of these stories uh, eulogizing Marshall's, uh, um, I think his, his wife recounted how he used to create quizzes for his three sons for about the church service to make sure that they were paying attention. <laughs> I thought that was genius. He never told me about that before. But he also taught journalism at the City University of New York um, when he was working in New York City. And so the, the graduates of his journalism classes, since Marshall's passing, have uh, posted uh, remembrances. And I'm just going to read this one here because I mean, and it, it is amazing. I mean, it summarizes infinitely better than I could ever summarize the way that Marshall uh, instructed them. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this. Marshall Allen was my investigative health journalism professor and capstone mentor. Taking his class was one of the best experiences of my life and career. From our first day working together on my capstone as well as in class, he made it abundantly clear about the person he was and strived to be. That's totally true. Marshall knew exactly who he was as a child of God. He was, to go on, he was an intelligent, assertive, and passionate person who cared deeply about justice and accountability in the healthcare system. That's right. He inspired us all to dive deep into our story by a shoe leather reporting. He had boots on the ground. Marshall was so good at working the phone. I mean, he was really good at that. <laughs> Ask the right questions and test our own personal limits on reporting. For example, he prompted two of us to approach a physician at Harlem Hospital that we were investigating. He proved to us through his bravery, and that's true, Marshall was brave. He did not have fear. 
um, the righteous are as brave as a lion. I think that's a book line from Proverbs as well. Um, he had, and, and the wonderful thing is that bravery is contagious. And so his bravery was contagious. He proved to us through his bravery that we too were brave enough to tackle the hard but necessary stories. To me, Marshall Allen is the definition of a true journalist. The world needs more Marshall Allens. And his legacy will live on in the stories he published, the students he taught, and the journalists, patients, and clinicians he undoubtedly impacted. Sending my condolences to Marshall's wife, children, family, friends, and former current co-workers. Mia. Thank you, Mia, for writing that. Marshall and I would laugh all the time. Okay, so we we talked a ton on the phone. Like I said, Marshall was really good at, at working the phone. <laughs> so he would just, you know, he would never he would never email me to be like, hey, are you available this afternoon? <laughs> or can we talk tomorrow? Like he would just call me <laughs> and just be like, hey, we, you, you got a second? <laughs> and so we would always when we were talking about, you know, things that were going wrong in healthcare and like ways that we could like fix it or like things that we could specifically do, like we were always laughing about it. Not like the point. I mean, you got to whistle while you work. Okay. Like this was his work. This is my work. And the point is, is that we were able to really enjoy each other's company. And Marshall had a fantastic sense of humor, which is super important if you work in healthcare, because if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. Um, I'll tell you one, one quick story. So he would post a lot on LinkedIn like me. And so he would post his stuff on LinkedIn. And there was some, frankly, just cranky insurance guy that was giving him a hard time. And so he calls me up and he's like, can you believe that guy and what he wrote on my post? And I'm like, and this guy had done this to me too. I'm like, Marshall, it's not you. He's done that to me too. And he's like, I can't believe that guy. And so I'm like, Marshall, let's pray for him. <laughs> and he's like, like now, like on the phone. I'm like, yeah, do it. Marshall, pray for him. And so Marshall says this really nice prayer for God to come into this man's heart. And we don't understand what's going on with him. We don't know what kind of day or week or month that he's having. But, you know, God, you know, show him um, your love. And um, amen. So. Several months transpire. And, you know, Marshall would go around talking at these various conferences and events across the country. So he goes and he talks at this event in New York. And lo and behold, the grumpy guy is in the audience at this conference. So Marshall finishes giving in his talk. He doesn't know the guys in the audience. But then when he gets down off the stage, he sees the grumpy guy coming towards him because he recognizes him from his LinkedIn picture. And he's like, uh oh. What's going to happen here? And the guy is so nice to Marshall. And he is so complimentary of the talk that he just gave. And like the two of them get like a picture together. And so then Marshall, like after he gets home from the trip, he like calls me up and tells me the story. <laughs> so I don't know if that was a direct result of our praying for this gentleman, but it just shows, I mean, he was, I mean, he was always, you know, thinking about people. And, um, and, and the last point here, and really serving people, Marshall 100% knew that it was better to give than to receive. And Marshall got so much joy out of service. I, I will easily tell you that Marshall got 10 times more out of serving people than what the people who he served ever got out of it. I mean, there is just, there is, it just fills your cup so much to serve and he knew that and he felt that and we and we would laugh about that um here's a picture of marshall when he was just at our you know you see obviously you guys like know my whiteboard right so he came into my little office where i shoot my video he said i want to see your office i want to see your i want to see your alpacas at your farm so he came over this gentleman in the middle is dr marty mccary and um marshall edited um uh, Dr. McCary's book, The Price We Pay, which has become a huge bestseller. And it really has, has re helped a lot of people who are new to healthcare gain a better understanding of, um, you know, the sort of the ins and outs and sort of the machinations of healthcare. And Marshall humbled himself. He was behind the scenes. Like you never knew that he edited that book. And Dr. McCary has a new book coming out and Marshall edited that book. And it, I mean, it takes like a year 
to edit this to edit these books. I mean, revision after revision after revision. The collaboration between Dr. McCary and Marshall it was just awesome. I mean, it was and like you know, Marshall really didn't talk about it. Like it was like he like this says from the book of James, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Um, his again in another article that's that eulogizes Marshall, his wife, he would have just randomly help people with their medical bills. He wrote Marshall himself wrote a book called Never Pay the First Bill. And people would like read this book and they would be like, and they would call up Marshall and they would be like, Hey Marshall, will you help me with this bill? And he was like, sure. And so he would spend gobs of like so this book came out like a couple years ago. And ever since this book came out, he would spend all this time um helping people. Like with their medical bills, like no one ever asked him to do it. He never told anybody about it. He never tooted his own horn. His wife said it was hundreds of people. He helped hundreds of people with their medical bills. He never told anybody about it. Um, Marshall knew that he was in this world, but he was not of it. He knew that this was this was all just temporary. And he knew that God was truth and God was eternal. And Mar Marshall really didn't get, he didn't really get flustered. He, he 100% knew who God was. He knew who Jesus was. He knew who he was. And he knew that he loved God and Jesus and he loved his fellow man. And he just wanted to serve them. And so this is from Isaiah. That will keep him in per perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee. Because he trusted in me, and he did. He he trusted in God so much, and it was amazing to see. So, we love you, Marshall. We love you, and you know, Marshall, Marshall. Um, you know, he, he was the breadwinner for his family, and he lived on a journalist's salary, and he drove a beat-up minivan. And um, if you would like to help his family, I will leave a link. Um, and if and if and if you don't, that's fine, too. Um, but um, we just, I just, I'm, I'm missing Marshall, and I know everybody else does, too. Thanks.